Um, so yeah, so we're going to move forward, move forward from with the well applying the, the, the information extraction approach that you've seen here. Uh, briefly introduced by Sergio to the construction of music knowledge bases. There you go. So we'll start with the motivation. <coughs> A little bit more if you still are not convinced about how difficult it is to do anything in the music domain, so a couple of more, a little bit more of evidence. Then we'll uh, present two of our uh, two papers from last year where we uh, try to uh, well, um, fill and uh, bridge the gap. No? That's a couple of things that are uh, that we felt that uh, had room for improvement. And then, well, uh, briefly, over a whole uh, pipeline to build a music knowledge base from scratch. Um, so, uh, at this stage of the, of, the, of the presentation, so you're already, already uh, convinced that structuring information in the information age is the big thing. Um, and, and for music information retrieval and for musicology, well, we're making sense of what people say about music, uh, has a very high potential. <coughs> um, you, not only for obtaining knowledge <coughs> automatically, but for asking complex questions, uh, the type of semantically difficult question that you might not even think about asking a search engine, like uh, um, how many uh, German bass players performed in the Madison Square Garden in the 80s. No, this is something that requires some kind of semantic information, and for this, ontologies or knowledge bases can be useful. Uh, for you to get an, a relevant answer to that question. And of course for musicology, uh, improving visualizations and improving <coughs> navigation and personalization. So as I just said, uh, generic knowledge repositories are in composition <coughs> of music. Um, and there are problems like, for example, only uh, well-known popular artists <coughs> obviously are there, but others like uh, uh, his band are not. Um, um, there's of course a little bit of bias towards Western, Western music and there is clearly bias in terms of uh, corporate bias. <coughs> so you have editorial and a little bit of biographical information, but you don't really have like the, the actual meat of what people are saying about certain bands in these structured, uh, in these structured repositories. <coughs> so our claim is that this can, be, can actually improve if you incorporate to knowledge repositories about music information that you found that you find in the structure text. From artist biographies in Last Defend, uh, these trivia websites like TV Tropes or, or Song Facts where you have a lot of facts about artists, songs, which are not necessarily contained, in most cases they are not in, in, in reference knowledge bases or even in the articles. So it doesn't have to be specifically about music, it can be a generic piece of text with information about music. Um, <coughs> As we said, no. Uh, when you have a when, oops, so this this is very nice, but clearly the bottleneck is at the very beginning of the pipeline. So you have to recognize the entities, and then you have to and to to know which of them are actually belonging to the music domain, and which of them are relevant to your reference knowledge repository. Because some of them are ref are entities that may be already there, so you can look up and see if there is something. <coughs> if you want to incorporate novel entities, then is where it comes becomes a little bit. Uh, more difficult. Uh, traditionally, you may use gazetteers, so looking this up, infor this information up in, either in a list or in a knowledge uh, base. But yeah, they work in, a, in a idiosyncratic and ambiguous cases, like the symphony number no. nine in D minor. But whenever there is variation, they fail. Um, the, again, the same mention may refer to different musical entities like Carmen the Opera, even in the music domain, like Carmen the Opera and Carmen the Opera's main character. So this is not actually actually fair, a fairly difficult task. Uh, there's variability between <coughs> the Rolling Stones and their Satanic Majesties. Uh, of course, musical entities with common nouns. Uh, Madonna could be the artist or the representation of Mary, but even things like the Who. I remember <coughs> that in the early days of, of web searches, there was this joke that uh, you search, uh, I don't know if it was Alta Vista or inside of any of these, the Who. I said, your search did not uh, return any match for the, your search did not return any match for Who, try a less common word, zero matches. <coughs> this doesn't happen today, but it used to happen uh, in the time. All right. so, uh, Alman, especially artist names get shortened in casual language, and casual language is the type of language that at some point you are going to address. Uh, Alman artist names may be the same, especially in debut albums. Uh, and for all these reasons, generic software for entity linking, they, well, they, they, are, uh, they are what we have. 
Uh, in the music domain, uh, we have identified certain short shortcomings. One of them is that they exploit context, as we saw in the past uh, example, but in some cases this can be counterproductive. So this is a table with the, uh, a corpus from last FM and the most, uh, the most frequent identified entities for some album and artist types from Baberfly, Tagni, and the India Spotlight. And the ones that are in red are because they were, in, the, in most cases, wrong disambiguations. And as you can see, most of them are, with, uh, are musical entities uh, uh, written with, with uh, stop words. Like, uh, for those of you who don't know, stop words are function words, like prepositions, conjunctions, etc. So once your system knows that you are speaking about music, it will tend to disambiguate every single, every single occurrence of anything against a, against a musical entity. This is when, whenever the system so in the end, the artist split up with, the, with his manager because they, they weren't doing well. The end, the, the doors uh, song. And this happens a lot in a lot of documents throughout the whole corpus. So, of course, Today, since these systems need to rely on context, but relying on context also has this short piece, uh, another uh, drawback. So we felt that uh, there should be a way to, uh, well, propose at least a line of, of a direction of research where this was addressed. So we thought, okay, so what about having a training corpus? Now we speak about it would be great to have training data, so why not? Uh, trying to think a way of automatically building a corpus for entity linking in the music domain with high precision. Even if not everything is annotated, at least those things that are annotated in the corpus make sure that uh, you're going to feed your learning <coughs> algorithm with reliable data. So what we did was we took the last of them, uh, artist biographies and annotated those cells of thousands of entities with very high, high precision thanks to Elvis. Not this guy over here, but rather a very you know, uh, humorous way of calling an entity linking both in an integration system. The idea is that, okay, you know, maybe one or two systems may be wrong, but if we uh, put together the output of an arbitrary number of generic entity linking tools, we may have some kind of uh, evidence of how uh, well, of how good this output is. This is a framework for entity linking, for integrating entity linking systems. So the output is a, is a homogenization of the output of uh, each of the systems that you put there. Keep in mind that some of them uh, tell you the offset at character level, as another other ones at token level, and this is integrated in, in, in Elvis. Um, so we processed 13,000 artist biographies, uh, which are collaborative efforts, pretty much like in Wikipedia. In Last.fm, people add hyperlinks, and these hyperlinks point to other Last.fm documents. So it's more almost the same as in Wikipedia. And what we used those hyperlinks to map from Last.fm to the Wikipedia. And after a thorough evaluation of different uh, degrees of agreement, uh, we annotated that we evaluated, I believe, 1400 sentences and with high precision, of course, we have less entities annotated, but the, the, the percentage of precision effect is very high. So we are very confident that this is a, a corpus where, even if not everything is annotated, whatever is annotated is in the vast majority of cases right. And in fact, if you go now to the website, what you're going to download is an improved version of, of the LMD. It's a bigger corpus because it has more stuff. And it's better because it has uh, different output formats. Now it comes with JSON, on, uh, in formatted as JSON, XML, Kate, and NIF. And a lot of annotations have been heuristically propagating, uh, propagated. So yeah, this is uh, one of the, of, the, of the resources that uh, that uh, we have made available for, for the research community. Um, in this context, even if we're going to say a couple of things about this at the end of the presentation, we are organizing a challenge in the European Semantic Web Conference about entity linking in the music domain. And um, we are going to, uh, we are uh, uh, validating a small set of these documents manually. Uh, this is being done by, by Alvin, who is there in the, the audience. So, uh, Keep working, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's going it's going well. We it's, it's three it's uh, task number three in a in a in a three uh, uh, task uh, open knowledge extraction challenge. 
and we are excited about it because this is the first time uh, there's going to be a uh, task on, natural, on the intersection between natural language processing and the music domain. So, and, and of course the data, training data is available already and the test data is going to be, is going to be released. <coughs> Alright, so now towards the music knowledge base, then from, from scratch. So this is uh, like entity linking, so we are spoken a lot about entity linking. We are going to uh, uh, say a couple of things about this uh, pipeline that does the whole thing uh, from scratch. So again, the task, once you have your entities disintegrated, is the task lies now on how to leverage this information as the cornerstone of a music knowledge graph. And the approach <coughs> was combining linguistically motivated rules over syntactic dependencies, pretty much like Sergio said, with st statistical evidence. This was a very dense paper, so we didn't think it made sense, to, well, not very dense, but dense enough for a three-hour tutorial. So many de technical details are left out. If you're interested, I, uh, we, we, we encourage you to, to have a look at it. But yeah, the main idea is that the shortest path over syntactic dependency sometimes breaks because uh, people can be very creative in how they uh, write, and this may, this may syntactic parsers not, not really knowing what they are parsing. So, uh, cases of, for example, of reported speech, like uh, sentences with uh, verbs like say, tell, or express, are difficult for syntactic parsers. So, we well, enforce certain syntactic relations, at least, for example, to get subject, verb, verb object. Uh, triples, at least this information we could, uh, if it was explicitly encoded and the path was below a certain threshold, then we took that, or uh, looking at the first relation word, etc. Then we cluster together relations, because uh, since our approach is on the, on the open information side, uh, a lot of uh, relations were pretty much the same, but they were verbalized differently. So we, we uh, proceeded to, uh, from right to left, uh, cluster together triples that had uh, songs and artist names, for example, as argument one and argument two, as type cluster, so song as a type was written by artist as a type, and then other uh, similar clusters were uh, uh, inter-clustered as one single relation, and this also allowed for a less sparse uh, set of relations, which is also better for navigation. Um, and relation scoring. So there's always this uh, problem of, okay, I have a very huge, dense graph, but now I want to trim it a little bit and I want to get rid of bad relations. So there are certain heuristics that you can follow. Um, so you will look at the number and proportion of triples each relation encoded and whether they were evenly distributed. We looked at the degree of specificity. So if we have a relation like performed with, we are 100 well, we are fairly confident that it's going to enforce artist entity on the left, on the left and on the right. So we assume that whenever a uh, relation is very specific, if uh, an outlier comes, we expect this to be an error and we get rid of it. Uh, and we, we also look at other criteria like frequency, length, and fluency. The general idea of word relations that preserve in some way the original order in the sentence. Um, this is precision, like how well the relations extracted from the music, from the knowledge list, preserve the original meaning in the sentence. From left to right are different configurations of the algorithm, and the last column is our competitor system that we evaluated against, uh, based on River, the system that Sergio mentioned earlier, which does very well, actually. Only the best, the most sophisticated uh, version of our algorithm uh, is more precise, and this evaluation comes from uh, manually checking the veracity of facts extracted from, 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 from the corpus. And we also wanted to know to what extent this approach, since it is uh, uh, based on uh, linguistic rules, statistical evidence, and entity linking, if it actually extracted more information for every pair of relations in the, in the first <coughs> pair of entities in the knowledge base, and in fact it did. So uh, the music knowledge base that we have released has uh, over 3,600 uh, relations per, for, uh, for every pair of entity uh, as compared with uh, the 1,500 of music brains and lower <coughs> numbers in the Wikipedia. And another nice application, and it's a shame that this is in PDF because it would be great to play these songs, but um, not the whole song, but a little bit, because uh, one of the applications that you can use 
with um, a graph that is constructed with natural language, since the relations between entities are in natural language, you can use it to explain recommendations. We are not evaluating the, 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 the quality of hotel recommendations, but rather we conducted a survey and asked people if they valued the fact that the, the recommendations they got were explained in natural language, even if the recommendation was questionable. Again, because the recommendation was not uh, evaluated in this paper. So you have uh, you like a Jersey Jersey girl by uh, Tom Waits. So for those of you who don't know, Tom Waits is a uh, well, it's not known for being the happiest artist on earth. No, so he, he you know the, the cigarette and the glass of whiskey and the the, the, the sore voice, and then you get a recommendation of not by a song, a song by Lady Gaga, which on principle doesn't make much sense. But then if you look at the at the explanation of the recommendation, it says that Bruce Springsteen covered Jersey Girl by Tom Waits. That Bruce Springsteen uh, played along Clarence Clemons, which appears in, which is featured in the uh, Lady Gaga song here. Clarence Clemons is the saxophonist over here. So uh, the conclusion we got was that for people that were educated in music, this that they really had, <coughs> so they didn't really appreciate it. But for people who didn't have a lot of music, musical background, didn't know too much about music, this actually made questionable recommendations at least better from the user side. So this was another conclusion. And an overall conclusion is that, well, as you can see, we have lots of structured information about music in the form of natural language that we can take advantage of. Um, and that we have barely, barely scratched the surface. So in our work, we never touch social networks, Wikipedia articles, no lyrics, and no subtitles. So the potential for improving uh, MIR applications and musicological applications using text processing is still there because there is a lot to be covered about which there has been any publication. For uh, potential for improving MIR uh, by integrating automatically, yeah, acquiring and processing, and these are a bunch of references. references. And we're going to finish with the <coughs> semantic enrichment of this context.